Welcome to Make Workshop, where we check out tools, toys, and tech built for makers. Today, we're going to be printing in resin. What we have here is the Prusa SL1. This is the first SLA printer to come from Prusa, and it is pretty interesting. The Prusa SL1 is a masked SLA printer. That means it's got a UV lamp, an LCD screen that acts as a mask, and then a vat of fluid that it cures using that UV LED light. Out of the box, you're gonna get your printer and in typical Prusa fashion, it comes with all the tools you need as well as a few sheets of replacement film for your vat and of course a bag of uh, Haribo gummy bears. Let's talk about specs. It's got 120 millimeters by 68 millimeters by 150 millimeters of print area to work in. As far as resolution, on the X and Y axis, you're looking at 47 microns, and then on the Z axis, you can go down as little as 10 microns. This thing has a few nice features, such as the uh, automated tilting bed for you know, doing your peel mechanism so that you get nice solid layers. It's got a fume extraction system built in a 5.5 inch LCD screen with full you know, control over the unit so you can run from a memory stick or connect to it over your network or over Wi-Fi and be able to see your jobs. Price on this unit goes for $1,399 for a kit and $1,699 fully assembled to your door. For this video, I'm using the Prusa curing and washing station as well. This is an additional $699, and in my opinion, if you're gonna be doing resin prints, you should get a washing station of some kind. This machine allows you to drop in your prints, do a timed washing in IPA, remove that vat, cure it all in one unit that's heated, filtered, has controls that allows you to customize the wash and the cure and things like that. It really helps cut down on the mess whenever you're doing 3D prints. However, you need to be aware, anytime you're working with resin, there's going to be a mess. No matter how careful you think you are, there's going to be resin in places you didn't expect. Be ready for it. So let's address the huge question everybody asks when the SL1 gets brought up, and that is why would you buy the SL1 for a little over $1,000 when you can get the cheap G2 box variations that have similar resolution for like $300. And before I jump into that, I need to point out a couple things. Prusa did not sponsor this video. They did send review units for us to check out, uh, but that's it. It is not sponsored. However, I personally use a Prusa MK3S and it's probably my favorite printer I've ever used, so I might be biased a little bit. That being said, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm not trying to sell you on this printer. Make your own decisions. I'll tell you what those differences are and what Prusa's answers were, and you can make your own difference. It's not my job to sell this printer. So, why would you buy this over the cheap ones? What are they thinking? I asked them this, and they said that their idea, their goal was not to compete with the very cheapest, not to try to race to the bottom. Instead, what they wanted to do was they wanted to hit the market in the middle. You have the dirt cheap ones that are cutting every corner possible, and then you have things like form labs that are extremely expensive. And there's a lot of people that want a quality machine and they're willing to pay a little bit to get some extra features. Features such as uh, the construction. When you pull this thing out of the box, you can feel it is heavy. Instead of, you know, uh, stamped and folded steel for the entire thing, they have things like, you know, the, the bulk of that body is milled out of a single billet, that the, the vat is milled out of a single billet. It's got the automated wipe procedure. Little things like the hinges on the top. First of all, it has hinges. You're not just lifting it off and putting the top somewhere else, but it, the hinges are hefty and hold the top solidly whenever it's open. Um, it has a full, you know, the color LCD with controls, so you can control the printer, even connect to it over Wi-Fi from your phone to control the printer, preview your files, get information. It's got a resin sensor. These are things you're not gonna find in the dirt cheap printers. And to go back a little bit to my personal bias, what it seems to me is that the crew at Prusa actually use the machines and adjust the features based on their use. You know, uh, there's a difference between putting a feature in a checkbox and saying this machine has 
you know, these features like a sturdy hinge or whatever and actually using the machine and going, oh, oh, we need to adjust this because every time you open it, you know, it kind of tends to wobble. So we need a stiffer hinge or a, a sensor or whatever. It seems like Prusa's team actually goes through and uses the machines so the features actually work as they should and as you expect them to instead of just being a checkbox on a list. Again, that might be some of my personal bias because I like my MK3S. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video today. We have some really cool stuff coming up. So be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the little notification bell so you can get an email whenever we put out a new video.